Uh, so I remember um, uh, <laughs> okay, give me a second right here. I got this. Just when I thought I can tell the story without crying. Okay, so the story is about my mom was feeling not okay. So, but I was like, I want to see my dad and they'd broken up. So I wanted to see him and I would get sick if I don't like for a very long time, like to a point where she's like, okay, I'm taking you to your dad because you're not getting well. It's probably an emotional sickness or something. And when I see my dad, I'm actually fine. So she's like, okay, I see this. So we went there to Blackheath. He lived in Blackheath. So when we got there, he was not at his place, which was a long walk to the place. And then we had to turn. I was like, let's just wait. She was like, no, we're leaving. He's not here. It's his fault. I'm leaving and you're coming and I'm like okay I have to come and when I got we got to the station I was like praying like please don't come no train come like our train going back should not come because you know I don't, I don't want the train to come and then he probably coming from another area and we miss each other so the train did not come in time his train came along coming from Tiger Bull and I was looking at the passengers because we're at the top of the bridge so you can see the trains coming down so I was like looking at everyone and I saw him immediately. I was like, yes, dad, I'm gonna have to leave. Like, I'm excited. And so she was like, okay. But by the time she, I saw my dad, she was having like an asthma attack. So she was not breathing well. And that's where like, I really need to get to him. So I maybe can do something. Like I was panicking. So I screamed and I called him and he saw me and he came up, to, um, came up the stairs to us. And about 10 minutes or later, she was breathing a little bit better. And, you know, we just like talked like two minutes and then our train came. So I was like, you know, she was going to be, you know, considerate, like she's not going to get into this train, she's going to wait for another one. Yeah, we, we went down the stairs <laughs> and then she was like, we're going into this train. I'm like, I was crying, right? And, but I knew if I was being insistent on what I do, she was going to make a big scene. And like my dad would have been just like this, you know, she would have been in the whole, you know, and I just was so ashamed. I didn't want her to make a big scene and I was worried that she was going to get angry at my dad and say I never come back. So I got into the train feeling very lost and weak. Like, you know, I couldn't, I was like, why do I feel like an extra? You know, when you're leaving, you feel like, okay, you feel that I'm leaving. I'm feeling like a little bit of emptiness, but this was heavier. So I was looking out the window and I was like saying bye, saying bye till the end, like as the train is getting out. And I somehow feel like I've lost a lot, but I couldn't explain. Like I'm very young at the time. I couldn't explain how I was feeling. And so, um, um, a few months passed and I was like, I wanted to see my dad like the normal way and she kept stalling it off stalling, and then eventually we went and I was very excited. I'm going to see him after that and this lady in the train, she saw my mom and recognized she was like, oh, I don't know, they start talking, but they were talking fast and I was kind of like put out of the conversation and the next thing I see my mom, she's not happy, but she just tells me, um, we can get off the next station. We're no longer going there. I'm like, wait. We're going to my dad and it's just like no we're not going it's not there the story was like he got sick went to tigerberg got a heart problem and he never got back so the neighbors don't know what happened so we went to tigerberg trying to look through the paperwork which was like big books like of old books you know, from people's patients and names and people died and everything and but now they had computers so they were still transferring that information to computers and the books were molded and stuff and I was like I'm not leaving here like I don't care how many books are there and then my mom got sick and tired of it she just I was like so I couldn't do much growing up and a few years later I just found out like no what happened is that he felt like it was not okay and then went to the hospital but on his way back met these gangsters so he was an easy target and they stabbed him. So I was like, but why didn't you say anything to me? And she didn't want to tap into it. She was like, she was very upset about it. The fact that I even, I don't even remember how I got the story. I think she mentioned it to me when she was drinking something. I think she was drunk when she told me this stuff. She couldn't even remember when she told me it. And, and I knew it was the truth because she wouldn't just say it like that. She never said anything about it. So. So that's all I know. I don't know where he's buried. I don't know anything besides that. Yeah.